Should you buy a used crypto binding GPU? Because I did. Was it a mistake? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, let's find out. Oh, hey, how you doing? Tech Dweeb here. Thanks for clicking on the video. So you might have heard that the good times are back. You can buy GPUs again. Yeah, new GPU prices have returned to normal-ish levels due to the crypto crash and the supply chains improving. And because of that, the used market is getting a much needed boost as well. We've been hearing for a long time that once the crypto bubble bursts, we'll see the market flooded with used mining GPUs. So has that happened? Well, yeah, a little. Prices aren't the rock bottom bargains that we were promised, but you can find some pretty good GPUs at some great prices on the used market. The problem is that some of these will most definitely be mining GPUs. Lots of sellers are honest about what they're selling, but lots aren't. But how much of a problem is that? Is buying a used mining GPU a terrible thing to do? Or does it even matter? I made a poll on YouTube recently asking you guys if you would ever buy a crypto mining GPU, and the vast majority of you said no way. Which really surprised me, to be honest. Because I, I personally don't think it's that big of a deal. I, I'm no expert on the subject, but I, I have my own thoughts on the matter. So someone on my Discord server asked this somewhat recently. He asked, you know, since it's likely that the GPU based crypto market will continue to collapse, would I ever buy a used crypto mining GPU, uh, knowing that it was probably used for mining? I'm not going to bother reading through the, the my entire response, but I'll toss it up on the screen. And you, you can come by the Discord if you want to see the whole conversation. Actually, you should come by the Discord anyway. <laughs> There's a, a good bunch of dweebs over there, I'll tell you that much. In a nutshell, I, I'm not fussed about mining GPUs because crypto miners usually undervolt their cards, so the are at safe lower voltages. And if they're gonna fail, they've likely failed already. The cards that are out there are probably fine. As long as you're not buying from like a shady seller who tried to sell a broken card that they fixed by baking it in the oven so it works temporarily or something. The, the way I see it, as long as the GPU works when you buy it, that's just fine. So there you go. That's my thoughts on the matter. I, I don't think it's really much of a problem. Yeah, you might get a GPU from a crypto zombie that didn't bother undervolting and ran the GPU into the ground. But you could also get a gaming GPU that was equally abused with a ton of ga long gaming sessions and overclocking. Buying used parts is just a roll of the dice sometimes. But there's nothing inherently destructive about crypto mining, as long as it's done right. I think that's like a misconception, is that the crypto mining is just damaging to GPUs. It, that's not true. You'll find lots of videos on this topic, and they all say pretty much the same thing. As long as the GPU works at the time you buy it, you shouldn't have a problem. But only time will tell for sure. And that's why I bought this. This is a used crypto mining GPU. It's a GTX 1660 that I bought off someone on Facebook Marketplace. It was a pretty good deal. It was like 125 bucks. At first, the guy didn't mention anything about mining. He just said used GTX 1660. But I looked at his selling history and I see all these <laughs> mining motherboards and power supplies and stuff. So I knew what I was getting into. So when I went to pick it up, I asked about right. I said, hey, bro, I'm not going to be bad or anything. I just want to know, uh, is this a mining GPU? And he sort of guilty smirked and said, yeah, yeah, it is. I asked him about how he used his GPUs for mining, and he said pretty much what I expected. He flashed them with a custom VBIOS and undervolted them. He had this GPU running at 247 for many months, like nine months, I think. And he was sort of making good money at the start, but after the price of Ethereum started going down, he had to stop his mining operation because it became unprofitable. The amount he made from mining was less than the cost of the electricity to run the mining rigs. He said he has a few of his higher end cards still, uh, just in case that some other crypto mining, crypto coin comes along in the near future that he could mine again. But when it all was said and done, in the end he actually lost money trying to be a crypto miner because he never made enough profit to cover the cost of the investment in the long run. It was only profitable for, for a while. If it stayed profitable, he would have made his money back and then it started making a profit. But because it didn't stay profitable for long enough, he, he lost money. 
Which sucks for him, but not as much as gamers not being able to buy GPUs because the crypto miners need 10 GPUs each for themselves so they can make money. So who the heck cares about that guy? Am I right? Anyways, the point of me buying this is to see how a crypto mining GPU performs. And also, my cousin needed a new GPU. So I figured I'd kill two birds with one stone. I'd get a chance to test a crypto mining GPU, and my cousin would get a cheap GPU to boot. I told him I'd replace it if it died, so no risk to him. And my cousin will use this thing for over a year at least, so I'll be able to make another update video if it has problems down the road, or if it dies, or straight up explodes, killing my cousin and his family. Uh, wow, that got dark, huh? Actually, I'm going to pin a comment if there's an update to this video, so check the description below if you're watching this video in the future. So, with that out of the way, without further delay, let's play some games. I'm running this in my main rig with a Ryzen 7 5800X, 48GB of DDDDR4 RAM running at 3600MHz, and a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD. Full specs listed in the description below. Starting off, as always, with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Mainly, I'm interested to see the performance. If it's sort of similar to what you'd expect for this GPU running this game, and also the temperatures. I'm going to do an in-depth temperature analysis and stress test at the end. These first few tests are just to, to get a general idea of where this GPU is at. I can't test this exact GPU before and after it was used for mining, obviously. I don't have multiple GTX 1660s, but when I look around at benchmarks and stuff, I usually see the temperatures for this GPU around 72 degrees, give or take, and the core clock between like 1860 and 1920 megahertz. So in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, running at 1080p with high settings, we averaged a very expected 68 FPS, and the GPU clock was a consistent 1905 megahertz, and the max temperature was 72 degrees. So my first impressions are that it performs like a normal non-mining GTX 1660. But one gaming test isn't enough to draw conclusions, so let's try some others. Horizon Zero Dawn's performance is about what I'd expect as well. I was running with 1080p with a favor quality preset, and I got an average of 57 FPS, with an average temperature of 71 degrees, and an average clock of 1920 megahertz. I've chosen more GPU intensive games for these tests, by the way. I figure if we're gonna push this GPU, we might as well push it to the max. And let's see if we could give it something it can't handle. Horizon Zero Dawn is performing like I'd expect from a GTX 1660, and it hasn't caught fire yet, which is good. Let's see if it stays that way. The Witcher 3 is a game whose performance I'm very familiar with. I play a lot of this game and I always test it on all my GPUs. 1080p with a maxed out ultra settings. My little benchmark jog through this town gave us an average of 54 FPS at 1920 megahertz at 71 degrees. Uh, again, as expected, but I, I was excited to try this game because I think I have a trick up my sleeve to push the GPU harder. My character's build is a bomb focus build, and I have a cluster bomb skill that makes it so that when I throw one bomb, it actually throws like seven bombs, and I can do it over and over again in a row. <laughs> This always tanks my frame rate when I'm playing, so I like to do it on my GPU tests. So let's see what happens. And would you look at that? My big bad bombs tank that FPS. It goes down to 39 FPS. But you know what? You know what's interesting is the temperatures. This is very taxing on the GPU, and the temperatures show it. It shoots up to 75 degrees when I do this bob thing. And the clocks drop down a little too, to 1905 megahertz. My goal is to push this GPU to the point where it breaks, or at least throttles significantly. But it's, it's not doing it yet. It's, not, it's doing just fine here in The Witcher 3, to be honest. <laughs> But let's throw something a little more demanding at it. 
These next two games should do the trick. This is Red Dead Online. Running with the Digital Foundry Xbox One X equivalent settings, 1080p, we, we averaged 59 FPS at 1905 megahertz at 73 degrees average. So it runs a bit more toasty here, but like, this is very normal performance. Judging from the impression that people have about mining GPUs, I was expecting this thing to overheat immediately or throttle itself to GT710 levels, or at least lose some serious FPS. Nope, it is running just fine. There are probably some good reasons for that. And we'll talk about it a bit though. For now, the hardest game that we'll throw at it before our full stress test is Cyberjunk 2077, running at 1080p with the medium preset. This is the most GPU intensive game that I know of. And well, it ran just fine. Totally fine. Better than the other games actually. 65 FPS at 1935 megahertz and 68 degrees. I was expecting this to crank things up, but it's a bit underwhelming to be honest. The card barely breaks a sweat and it runs completely problem free. I wonder if it got a chance to cool down because the game took so long to load. I was running this off an external hard drive, so like it took like two minutes to load. Maybe the GPU got a chance to cool down. I don't know. It's running totally fine here though. So on to our extended test. I chose God of War for this test. I wanted to run the intro seed here with the stock settings, and then I'm gonna let it idle at the menu at the max graphic settings for like, like a long time, like 20 minutes. And then after that, I'm gonna rerun the benchmark and see if the extended usage causes the temperatures to get super high or the clocks to throttle or the performance to suffer. So starting out with the high settings, we averaged 52 FPS at 1905 megahertz, and it actually got pretty toasty pretty quickly, uh, like 78 degrees. I guess this game pushes the GPU to the point where it draws more power and generates more heat. So this is gonna be a good test. I'm going to change the graphics to ultra and I'd leave it running for about 30 minutes. I'll leave hardware info 64 open as well so you savvy dweebs out there can see both the, yeah, the GPU and the hotspot temperature. And after a while, yeah, yeah, the temperatures did creep up. They hovered at around 79 degrees for a while, and they did break 80 degrees at one point. The clocks also throttled more when the temperatures peaked, down to 1890 megahertz. But even after all that, when I ran the benchmark immediately after this extended test, the result was exactly the same as before. 52 FPS, down to 1890 megahertz, but still 78 degrees. And the FPS was exactly the same, which, which surprised me. I was expecting at least a little bit of a performance dip, but, but no, nothing. This is frankly the most normal and underwhelming result. A totally normal performance for a GTX 1660, which is good, I suppose. It, it proves my point. It doesn't make a very interesting video, but at least in this case, buying a used mining GPU was not the worst decision I ever made. I found some. Get in the boat, boy. Yay. Yay. So like, if I'm having a fine experience, why do so many people have the belief that mining GPUs are bad? Does this prove the ball wrong? Well, no, not exactly. It's a bit more complex because this is a 1660. It's not a GPU that runs crazy hot. It doesn't suck back a ton of power. It's a pretty low level GPU for mining, to be honest. If this was a non LHR 3070 or a 3080, then you probably have a much more exaggerated detriments if you got a GPU that was abused. But I gotta go back to my earlier points. Crypto mining, when done right, runs the GPUs at lower than stock voltages. If a component on the board is going to fail, it'll probably fail pretty early on in the GPU's life once it starts binding. The most likely thing to fail on a used binding GPU is the fans, to be honest, and they're easy enough to fix. I made a video on that, by the way. But the GPU itself, if it's still going strong and shows no signs of failure, then I don't see how it's suddenly gonna develop issues when you're using it to game. These things are designed to be used. They don't have an odometer. They're not gonna fail after a certain mileage. GPUs do fail, no question, but, but it's a roll of the dice. Maybe you'll get unlucky buying a binding GPU, but maybe you'll get unlucky buying a gaming GPU. We have to be rational here. Yes, crypto mining feels like it should be bad for a GPU, running it nonstop for months on end. 
But if you don't see any evidence that it has been damaged by doing so, then I don't see any reason not to snag a good deal on a good working GPU. Or at least consider rolling the dice if the price is right. Time will tell though. I, I, like I said, I'm giving this GPU to my cousin and he plans to play lots of games on it. If it ever dies or develops any issues at all, I'm going to make a follow-up video and pin a comment on this video. I don't think I'll need to do that, but I'm willing to admit that I was wrong if I do. So get subscribed so you don't miss my potential future video begging for your forgiveness for my ineptitude. And that brings us to the end. Please let me know in the comments below. Are you wary of buying a crypto mining GPU? Have you had any good or bad experiences? Do you agree with the points that I've raised? Anything I foolishly missed or didn't discuss? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video or the thumbs down button if you didn't. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.